From the Upcast Studios in Oklahoma City, you're watching the Press Row. Press Row is brought to you by Cox High Speed Internet. I'm Jenny Carlson here with Barry Trammell, and it's time for our weekly inbox segment where we take your email questions and answer them. Be sure to email us if you've got a question for the inbox, and we'll try to get to you. Today's first question is from Steven. Steven asks, so is BYU out of the Big 12 picture? Is it because of politics or TV? Is it really because BYU doesn't play on Sunday? I just don't get it. Well, I think the answer is uh, some of the above. Yeah. I think uh, BYU has a reputation for being hard to deal with uh, in the political realm in terms of conference affiliation. There's people that have worked with BYU in the Mountain West Conference don't speak highly of the, uh, of the relationship. So I think that's turned some Big 12 people off. I also think BYU's relationship with ESPN. They've got this uh, singular contract with ESPN. I think the Big 12's had about enough of individual school contracts with ESPN. The Longhorn Network and ESPN sort of torpedoed the Big 12. Uh, I think that's what probably what's keeping BYU out. I think ultimately it's better options. You know, Barry talks about BYU's reputation, and I think I think Stephen brings up some good issues there. I think those are some things that are out there. But I think when you look at a West Virginia, Louisville has been talked about, and ultimately I think, and, and Barry, correct me if I'm wrong, you think Louisville probably will be uh, a Big 12 member at some point. I just think those are better options. I think you know they're potentially as good or maybe better TV draws. I think they. They've got some, uh, you know, right now you look at where West Virginia is football-wise, probably a little bit higher than BYU. Louisville rising. Uh, basketball at Louisville, very good. I just think some options are better. I think that's why BYU's maybe been pushed out a little bit. Yeah, you very well could be right. All right, let's go back to the inbox. This one's from Larry. Larry asks, during the OUK State game, one of the TV announcers said that he thought Landry Jones would come back for his senior season to work on uh, his being prone to make mistakes when under pressure. Do you agree with that, Mary? Uh, no, I don't. I think Landry Jones is gone. I think he's going to be a top 10 pick. He's going to be a very high draft pick in the NFL draft next April. And when you're that high, even Bob Stoops will say, you got to go. So I don't think Landry Jones is coming back. Now, if a guy were to going to come back, it would be somebody like Landry Jones. He's a little bit of a different kind of character. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I, I don't think it's a slam dunk, but I don't have any confidence that the Sooners will have Landry Jones next season. Yeah, and I'm, I, I agree. I think it's a pretty much a 50-50 thing at this point. You know, uh, Landry Jones, will he come back? Will he stay? But the question of what he does under pressure, I think that is an interesting point. You know, I do think Landry Jones, one of the things that he's been most inconsistent about is how he handles pressure. When he gets, uh, when he gets pressure in the pocket, when he gets flushed out of the pocket, you know, he is, he's been known to try to throw balls away that almost get intercepted or do get intercepted, make not good decisions. That's something that if he were better at, he'd be better as a college quarterback. And obviously, he's going to get pressured in the NFL. He's going to have to get that figured out to be a truly good and effective NFL quarterback. All right, back to the inbox. This one's from Mark. How about a column on getting rid of Tony Romo? Isn't it about time, Barry? I'm all for it as long as you tell me who you're going to bring in. Who are you going to get to replace him? Is there anybody better available to the Cowboys? The answer is no. Not John Kitna, not Stephen McGee, not anybody on the open market, not anybody you can trade for. Now, in the offseason, if you can, uh, you know, if you can work a deal, we'll see. But I just, you know, I don't see, uh, I don't see any better alternatives than Tony Romo. He is what he is. He's a loose cannon of a quarterback. He makes some great plays, then he makes some terrible plays. Um, he's a poor man's Brett Favre, which uh, is not going to get you to the Super Bowl. But right now, he's Dallas's best option. Well, yeah, maybe right now. But I agree in the offseason. I think that it's time for the Dallas Cowboys to figure out what's next. Tony Romo, I think, you know, I think he's a, a fine NFL quarterback, but if you're trying to contend for championships, which I assume Jerry Jones would like to maybe win a, a, a Super Bowl here at some point, I think you got to go get a different quarterback. I don't know if that means, you know, going young and, and trying to get a, a draft pick that you, you bring in and mold. I assume it probably means going out and find somebody veteran, but it looks like to me that the Tony Romo experiment, Barry, and you've seen it a lot more in person than I have, seems like the Tony Romo experiment may have hit it's apex. I don't know if he's going to get any better. It seems like he's sort of hit a hit a wall in where he can develop. Well, he's almost 32 years old. He's not going to get any better. Yeah. As soon as everyone realizes this is who he is, this is what you've got, everybody's going to feel better. 
or worse, depending on your viewpoint. Back to the inbox. Jim asked, I can't figure out what game some of you are watching Saturday in Stillwater. That was ridiculous. I hope OSU beats the snot out of everyone they play, but if their defense continues to give up that many yards, OU will kill them. Well, here's the darndest thing, and maybe this has not reached all corners of American fandom. But uh, on the uh, scoreboard where they got the uh, they got the points and then they got the yardage totals, they determine the winner of the game up there with the points. <laughs> 622 yards by Baylor means nothing. It literally means nothing. It's like uh, a baseball team leading the league in doubles. Nobody really cares. It's how many runs you allow. And Baylor ran up and down the field, but OSU took the ball away from them or turned them back at the goal line. And they've been doing that all year. That's not a flukish thing. It's not a one-time thing. OSU's defense is good at, uh, at keeping you out of the end zone, and that's what matters way more than yardage in 21st century football. They give up 622 yards and win by five touchdowns. That, to me, is a successful day offensively and defensively. People can say what they want about yards. I've seen this OSU defense enough to know it's a little bit maddening when teams are marching up and down the field. Baylor did it on the opening possession of the game. Then they get to the two-yard line first and goal, and OSU turns them away on four consecutive plays. To me, that's a defense that brings it when they have to. Now, OSU has said, has said they would prefer less yards. I don't think any anybody on that OSU defense is saying, yeah, let's keep giving up 622 yards. But if you get turnovers and you're good in the red zone, and that's something that maybe hasn't been as much publicized as just how good OSU is in the red zone. 11th now in the country are the Cowboys in red zone defense. That's the kind of thing that wins ball games, and it's going to win ball games even if they give up 100 or 622 yards. Hey, be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoma.